vessel of creative energy overflowing with the passion to inspire. Charles Chaz Miller is a lifelong Detroit-based community-driven artist, muralist, and teacher. His imagery is a passionate reflection of struggle, voice, and daily life he calls imaginary realism. Chaz is an integral part of many neighborhood communities. In his public artworks, he engages neighborhood residents with the goal to uplift and inspire community members to use their creativity and foster their cultural pride. His process encourages them to stop looking and start seeing as they co-create a vision for their lives. Thank you so much, Chaz Miller, for joining me here and Aware Now to share this space and to share your story. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for having me, certainly. Gratitude is the attitude. Gratitude is the attitude. So let's talk for a moment about your work as a mural artist. Okay. Your work, it brings communities together. As you offer an invitation for community collaboration and connection, so with the many mural projects that you've been involved with over the years, my question now is, can you share a story about a connection, a personal connection that you make with someone at one of these projects of yours? Well, there are a lot of them. Um, I mean, most of my, my wife, I mean, that's the number one, my wife. The, the, first, the first mural I did in Detroit with the Patton Park uh, supposedly uh, teens in crisis. <laughs> These are the good kids because their parents were getting them involved in programs. The teens in crisis would come and steal our paint when we went to lunch. <laughs> True story. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but so her, my wife brought her daughter to be in the program, the summer program. And, uh, you know, I don't usually be hitting on the moms. I don't do that, y'all. <laughs> she's in the background but um yeah so we just hit it off and her daughter is, is still like she's got a catering business now and you know our son her son actually bought the house next door to ours so yeah that's the best story i can think of i mean i got a lot of them mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. that, you know what can top that right no, no meeting your love of your life with a <laughs> right. mural project that's yeah. that's pretty that's pretty epic yeah um, and, and, and she's a she's a maker so mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. She souls and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so, you know, when it comes to art, you use it as a tool, not only for personal expression, but for public education. Would you speak for a moment about public art and its importance to our communities? Well, the, the number one buzzword that comes to mind is placemaking. Um, you know, everybody can relate to that now. It's been in our, our, you know, vernacular now for the last few years. It's been a big buzzword. So, you know, it creates a sense of place. It creates a sense of ownership and it creates a sense of community. And through the process, the engagement builds those relationships. I mean, that's how I met my wife. I mean, you get to know people, you get to talk to them. And oftentimes when we're doing these projects, we don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion. We don't talk about COVID, you know. We just talk about art, being creative, making things better. We try to really keep it positive, really keep it positive. Um, and if you want to vent, that's something different. Yeah, maybe at lunch you go over there and vent and all that. But right now, it's just come and engage and meet people and put all your petty differences aside and let's accomplish a goal together. And at the end of the day, you know, we'll have a shining beacon that'll motivate and inspire. And that's what I've always wanted to do as an artist, not be rich, not be, I wanted my talent to maximize my talent to its fullest potential, to be as versatile as possible in many different genres and area with my talent, whether it's painting, drawing, charcoal, pen and ink, uh, line on cut, it don't matter. I just want to be able to experience it and then um, and and then be able to share that to educate and uplift. So, mm -hmm. and that's what it's been about. It's been um, art education and community beautification. Mm, that is so, so beautiful. Um, I love that you've committed your talent and dedicated your talent to this the way that you have. It's uh, switch gears for a moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It seems that you and I have something in common, and that is an affinity for butterflies. And mm. your work, your I love. I just very much enjoy getting lost in your work um, online, what I see behind you, from Wings of Liberty to yes. Migration of Inspiration to the Papillon Project. Yes. It's a recurring element 
in your work. So I wondered if you would just share for a moment the personal significance of a butterfly. Well, it started with a third grade class and us doing, I was late for school. I think I had a kind of a party night that week <laughs> and I didn't have my lesson plan together. So I needed to come up with something. So this was like the first day of school, the first week. So I'm driving to school. I'm like, shit, I didn't do my lesson plan. I didn't come. But I had been doing it enough to. So I was like, okay, it's a third grade class. How hard can it be to come up with something to keep them busy, right? So I think of Rorschach ink blotter. You don't need a lot of materials. You can use, you need a piece of paper and some paint. That's it. So it don't take a lot of setup. So that's what we did. And of course, kids start seeing butterflies. And so that gave me an idea, bing. So I went home and researched butterflies and seen all the cool patterns and all that kind of stuff. So I brought the actual printouts of the butterflies that I did back to class the next time. Now I got a lesson plan. Mm -hmm. Took that back to class and I had the kids analyze them and then re-visualize them and come up with these morphed out butterflies with um, subliminal images that their minds projected, which you call astro projected. So they started seeing infants and birds and they came up with some of the coolest ideas. And so then we took those projects and blew them up and did paintings. Um, and then that just took off. I just, I love the idea. It was a great lesson plan. I started implementing it in some of my other classes. Then I thought about, um, one of the volunteer days we had, we had stacks and stacks of plywood donated because we had so much raw material donated, you know, it's crazy. So this particular summer, I don't know how much plywood it was, but it was like plywood that had been on board of the buildings, but so it wasn't new. Um, and so instead of throwing it away and we were boarding up houses at the time, but we had so much. So I started painting butterflies on them and doing the cutouts. Mm -hmm. So that's what, if you've seen the video with 500 strong, did you mm -hmm. see that video? Yeah, I did. So yeah, that's where we got all that wood from. Got it. And so that day I had 500 volunteers. We had 2,000 volunteers that day. I had 500 of them painting papillons. And that's when the papillon effect really took effect. But the whole, the whole mission statement behind it was the metamorphosis and the change of Detroit at the time, because Detroit was still all the documentaries that were coming out was how blighted Detroit, you know, everything. You remember that, that period we went through. And so the whole thing was, you would never know this ugly caterpillar is going to turn into this beautiful butterfly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that was the thing. It was a symbol of not only metamorphosis, but vision, mm -hmm. foresight future future vision seeing beyond the ugliness you know seeing beyond the veil so and it just yeah and i just fell in love with it and then with the um you know just taking it to another level by putting my uh silhouetted faces and characters into it again spawned from the inspiration of the kids you know seeing all the images and, mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and you know and that's what the rorschach psychological blotter is all about you know anyway right yeah. Psychoanalyzing us through shapes and colors and forms. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, it's really, really powerful. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, so here's the thing is that some people will talk about social issues, but you, Chaz, on occasion will paint them. So, in that way, you are more than an artist. You're an, well, I would say an artivist. So, as an activist, like of a quality needed change, what is one of your favorite pieces that you've done that speaks to societal issues? Ooh, that's a good question. So, let me see. Hold on, Rick, one second. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera. <laughs> so this is, can you see me okay? I can see you. So this piece, I would say, is I did this earlier this year. It's called uh, Literary Terrorist. Wow. Books being banned and knowledge being suppressed and the fact that a writer, the pen is mightier than the sword, and the writer is more of a threat than he's the real terrorist. 
mm -hmm. someone like you mm -hmm. that's a real writer that you know the pen is mightier than the sword you know what i'm saying and that's all i'm saying mm -hmm. uh you know you can use all the bombs and stuff you want but when you really start influencing people's mind you become a real threat he who controls the image controls the mind mm -hmm. it is something that's why advertisers know this. That's why Pepsi don't let up. They can have number two share on the market, number one share on the market, and you still see the advertisements every five minutes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the races, Pepsi, 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 as the cars go by, come on, man, give me a break. Um, in this particular case, again, I'm getting back on my fashion hat. This particular brand right now, everybody with Detroit, um, this is my logo. It's two heads coming together. You've probably seen it on my website. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's a butterfly. Uh-huh. But it's actually two heads coming together like that. You know how we do it. It looks like a third eye. You ever yeah. done that with your husband? Um, I don't think so, actually. Oh, you and your husband got to do it. We'll do yeah, so it tonight. Heads together, yeah. And you look each other in the eye, and it looks like you got one eye in the middle. OK. So we can you get that. the third eye, you really make a deeper connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, and then, so I have a whole campaign right now with, so let me tell you what happened. Detroit versus everybody, Detroit versus everybody. So one day I'm just doing an internet scavenger hunt, looking at stuff and it says, you know, Samuel Jackson is running, for, wants to run for mayor in Detroit. Mark Wahlberg is opening a restaurant. Kid Rock is opening up a restaurant. They're building a pizza theater. It was just all this stuff. And I was like, don't look like Detroit versus everybody. It looks like everybody's with Detroit. And a light bulb went off in my head. Mm -hmm. And I've always, again, if you've ever seen, there's a Japanese scientist that did a whole research on water and he found that water has memory. And one of the experiments they did, they took three jars and put rice and water in each jar and they labeled each jar, hate, love, and the other one was just, they ignored it. The one they ignored turned into like a black goo. The one that they put love on to turn to rice wine and the one they put hate on turned into slimy, moldy, ugly, yeah, you got to look it up. It's really, look up the mysteries of water. Uh -huh. It's really amazing. Water is amazing. So, I made me forget my whole point. <laughs> I think what we were talking about, what you were talking about is everybody with Detroit. Oh yeah, me back yeah. in this spot. Yeah. Us. Yeah, so again, that's the thing. It's changing, changing the narrative. Yeah. Right, changing the narrative. And the whole thing with the water was the thought. You're, you, I mean, we're mostly water. And so by thinking and wearing things on your shirt that's negative affects your 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 makeup, your cellular makeup, literally. It's been proven through this rice experiment. So everybody with Detroit is just what it says. It's everybody with Detroit, everybody coming together. So uh, one last question for you today, Chaz, is this. One day when you are not here, your art, will be. Your art will remain. It will continue to speak to the communities that it serves. So my question is, what do you hope it says to those who see? Well, it says work together, stick together, understand that there's more to this existence than what we see. Just like there are radio stations you can't hear, but when you tune into them, you're that frequency. And I think that's one of the biggest things is that we limit ourselves and our possibilities and our capabilities. So I just want people to really realize that there's no limit to the sky. When you look at all my different diverse talents, my different diverse subject matters, um, the topics I deal with and so on and so forth, and my approaches that I've tried to be an example of versatility and diversity and mm -hmm. embrace diversity. And that's through people, through education and music and food, and you will be a much richer person. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Chaz, for sharing your story, for sharing your beautiful, incredible, amazing art, for sharing this space, for helping all of us become a bit more aware now. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Kiss the babies and <laughs> hug the hug. <laughs> you know I will. <laughs>